Last week, of course, we had the Democratic National Convention. This week, we have the Republican National Convention. Uh, we're covering both, and, and it's a, a good time to talk about voter misinformation as we talk about this bigger topic of misinformation in general and even uh, conspiracy theories. But I'll ask uh, Dr. Lisa Fazio here, Vanderbilt psychology professor, what about voter misinformation? Um, how, how is this weaponized? And, and just how, how prevalent is it right now? You know, what, what are you seeing with voter misinformation? We're seeing a lot of it. Um, and part of it is because kind of a lot of the rules are up in the air right now. So for different um, precincts, will you be able to vote absentee or by mail um, with COVID as a reason? Or will you have to go actually in person to do your vote? Um, and so t people are taking advantage of that uncertainty um, and using it to try and disenfranchise voters to try and encourage them to stay home and not vote, um, and to encourage them to think that our voting system is rigged or that the votes might not be counted properly. And I think it's really important to keep emphasizing that uh, voter fraud is amazingly, shockingly rare in this country. Many, many people have done many, many studies trying to find evidence of it, and it's just not there occasionally one or two people vote fraudulently there's never been any sort of organized ring that's managed to do that with modern systems it's just not an actual problem that you see um, but you'll see a lot of discussion of that over the next few months of people trying to convince you that you shouldn't trust the outcome of the election we'll see a lot of that and frankly after the last election um the president said that there were three million, he lost by three million votes, and yet he said he won, that those, essentially those three million, it was wrong. And, and when you have a leader of, of a, a country saying those kind of things, and it's not the first time it's happened, but how, how concerning is that? I mean, you're talking about our institutions, right? Um, and how, 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 what happens when you have someone that's that powerful that's saying something that's that wrong? I think it's a huge problem, and I think it's important to emphasize that there is no evidence of that massive voter fraud. The Republicans have done the investigating, Democrats have done the investigating, no one has ever found evidence of that. Um, it's just not something that happens. But I think we need to, if we can't trust our elections, then we don't have a democracy. Um, and so it's really important for people to get the correct information on how they can vote, how can, they can make sure that their vote is counted, um, and all of the processes that are in place so that you can trust that vote and the outcome of the election. And one of the things that you would turn to to get the correct information is, has been the media. And now the media is under attack. And we've had people call in to this show and say, well, the media, they do have meetings and they get their marching orders and they go out and they, they spread misinformation. And so the media is under attack. And I would ask you again, as somebody that's kind of followed misinformation and how it gets spread, is that, a, is that something that we've seen in other countries? Is that a common thing? Or I guess, you know, how common is it to try and weaken the trust in an institution like the media? It's really common. It's something that you see oftentimes as kind of democracies fade into not being democracies anymore. Um, attacks on the media, attacks on free press, um, attacks on other institutions. Um, and you're seeing a lot of those warning signs right now in the US. And I don't think we're doomed. I think the US has a very strong democracy and I'm hopeful that it will continue to have a very strong democracy. But there are these warning si signals that we need to be paying attention to and that we should be acting upon. And one of the important things to remember is that there's only two ways in the US for your vote to count. You either vote by mail or you vote in person. There's no such thing as online voting. There's no such thing as vote by text. Um, it's got to be one of those two methods. All right, now see, that's fascinating. So when we talk about misinformation, there would obviously be um, misinformation about um, X or Y, but you could also be misinformed about how you could actually vote. They could tell you, okay, text in your yeah. vote and you're all done. And I guess that yeah. that's out there. Does that kind of thing get out there? 
Yeah, there was um, misinformation around the 2016 election in communities where there were kind of targeted text messages campaigns telling them to either vote online or through text message. Okay, so please don't do that. Okay, that's not, um, it's not true. I think I, I didn't realize it, but yeah, you can you can vote in person or um, uh, the mail-in situation. All right, that's that's very interesting. And so, all right, we're come, we're running out of time. Bottom line, we have two minutes. If you wrap all this up, um, kind of what's the takeaway? What what's what's the bottom line when we're talking about misinformation? How these things spread? How they take hold? What's what's the takeaway from all of this? Yeah, I think the big thing is that it's not just other people. You can be fooled too. Um, and anytime you come across information that kind of elicits a really big emotional response to you, like, this is great, I can't wait to share it, or oh my gosh, can you believe that? Those are the times that you should take that signal and throw it into Google, see if anyone else is saying the same thing. Those times when you have a big emotional reaction are the times that you should pause, think about what you're looking at, and whether or not you should be sharing it. And so often I feel like people are reluctant to say, well, I made a mistake. And so then they just keep holding on, even in the face of a lot of evidence that, that something's not right. Maybe um, we can admit everyone, all of us, me, all of us, that it's okay to every once in a while be fooled and, and, and maybe it's, it's worthwhile to to research and, and change your mind on something or, or, or be more enlightened on something. Is, is that right? Yeah, I think we should all be normalizing that sometimes we get it wrong. We all make mistakes and we work to be better and to do better in the future, but all of us at some point are gonna believe something that's incorrect, um, whether it's because we were misinformed or we didn't do our research or we relied on an incorrect source. Um, but it's important that we kind of recognize that, realize what is correct, and then move forward with that new information. Because there are very sophisticated efforts out there right now to spread misinformation. And so it wouldn't be um, a stain on your character if for a moment you you know fell victim to that. The, the positive thing would be to research it and change, change your opinion there. But okay, Dr. Lisa Fazio, thank you. Thank you for coming on. Appreciate it. Um, we're going to take a break. We'll come back. We'll wrap everything up right after this.